So what happened today? These guys don't know what we've done since we left, really. Yeah, well, what did we do? We went into Drake Bay. We got some supplies, we got some fresh fruit, pineapples, watermelon, passion fruit. Ah, we found maracuya. Yeah, all the goodies from the tropical countries. Yeah. We brought some water into the boat too. Then it started pouring down. <laughs> so we got our tanks full of water, which is really good. All my clothes are wet, so I get, I'm wearing this really beautiful purple towel. You're looking sexy, man. <laughs> <laughs> we headed off to Guanacaste and that's where we're going right now. It's great. No sound of any engines, just the force of the wind carrying us. It's beautiful. This is my first time sailing. No way! This is my first time on a boat. Dude! Congratulations, man! Thank you, dude. And welcome. Welcome to my life, my friend. I love it. <laughs> Julian's first sailing experience was a real treat for both of us. I got to experience everything again for the first time through his eyes. We caught mahi, we saw dolphins, we saw whales. Costa Rica is an amazing cruising ground. We were able to spend three amazing days in the Bat Islands of northern Costa Rica before I had to beat feet south because I finally found a yard to haul out Zingaro. Gotta show you guys the fish we just caught. <laughs> Okay, fellas, I gotta tell you, um, James has been sailing pretty much all night. What a dude. Rough winds, rough weather. But now we're getting closer. It's a beautiful beach, which is rock. Parque Nacional, Santa Rosa, Costa Rica. I'm getting chased down by this storm and I'm, I'm going pretty fast. I just caught a big mackerel. Look, check this guy out. Beautiful fish. And he's big. And I'm about an hour, not even an hour, I'm about 15 minutes from uh, getting the mooring ball. Life is good, man. I got dinner. Looks, I don't know where this mooring ball is, but here's Caldera. I got another storm here. Check it out. Just got through that one. That one. Here's another one. In typical Costa Rican fashion, I talked to the manager of this yard. He told me, take a buoy, wait till tomorrow. I'm gonna get the, the thing in the water when it's low tide, and then when it's high tide, it'll be underwater, and then we'll get it all straight. Wait for the tide to go down, pull you out. <laughs> the two guys here were like, one guy didn't show up today, it's just us. Okay, well, which buoy do you want me to take? They're like, wow, we can do it. Let's get you out of there. <laughs> we'll see, man. It looks like this thing's a little bit uh, rickety, but they got some big ass boats out, so. Ah, it's cheap. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break anything. If it does, I'm gonna get a discount. I got him in the yard. This is Caldera. That's the machine holding me out. They're probably gonna put me over here somewhere. I didn't even expect to be out this easy and this soon, so that's just, this is awesome. Take it. 
it. It's not fracturing and um, looking good. Guess who is back from Deutschland? I'm back from the Deutschland. <laughs> to see my man. Yeah, so we're at the train station. Nikimi's back. Since after, yesterday, actually. After five long weeks. No, we're supposed to be pretending. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just arrived. I'm back. Uh, so fresh after two days on a plane. Yeah. We stayed the night last night with um, the owner of the boat yard, George. Awesome, dude. Yeah, such he's, a cool guy. he's such a cool dude. I'm back on Zingaro. Well, under Zingaro. Yay. James went to San Jose to pick me up right before that. He holds Zingaro out. And now everything is freaking missing. The guard caught somebody uh, trying to run away with all of James's tools. And we just came back. James went inside and the drone is missing. The radio with AIS, it was a good one, is missing. And I don't, I haven't even been up there yet. Like, that is the paycheck of one and a half months right there. Gone. Even though he even put it in a freaking boat yard, said somebody would have an eye on it because we know that this area is kind of shady. So let's go up there. Yay, my first time. James obviously just lost his mind. Radio, gone. At least they left a system here. It's so dirty. He tells me I'm the dirty one in his relationship. I'm gone for a month. I mean, look at this. I mean, now he can obviously tell me that it was just uh, people breaking in here. At least they left the, the spear guns. Did she call the police? No, I just talked to the guy that owns the place and uh, he's he got no insurance. He can't do anything about it. He said that the police probably won't even come. We went through all our shit to see what is missing and we figured out that the drone is gone and the VHF radio and then we were freaking out blah 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 and then we were trying to talk to people whether they've seen somebody or not it was way more it was not only about the drone and the radio it was about justice so obviously we didn't find anything so we came back we're depressed sat down on the couch here and you want to know what we found in the sink? Oh. <laughs> the VHF! Uh, so the guard, the guard found a guy breaking in here, right? And said, hey, cabron, que haces? And uh, so the guy hit the road and ran away. And obviously he didn't take the radio. So the only thing that's really missing is the drone, which James is obviously still super upset about. And... The SD card that was in there, he used it in the GoPro before that, when he was diving in Isla Caño and Isla Milagro or something like that. Uh, so the footage is gone and the drone. That really sucks but it's not as bad as we thought because we're on schedule to leave to Isla del Coco, which is it's gonna be a journey for us on this small cat. We're ready to rock still, but we're not gonna have any drone footage of Isla de Coco, which is super sad. But the view is awesome. I mean, behind the fence anyways. As long as it sails, huh? They didn't take the generator, they didn't take... The output. Well, the output they actually could have taken, I wouldn't have been too sad about. We are at the police station. Basically, they're going to take a police report here, and uh, I am going to have to uh, probably receive a cop of the boat to check out the boat. So they interviewed both me and the secretary. They're actually going to come to the boat and see if they can take fingerprints or something. I think it's kind of a lost cause. But I gave them all the stuff that they stole, and basically they're going to make a report and try to and give us the report, that way we can give it to the um, insurance place. This is Stephanie. Hi. Muchas gracias por su ayuda, Stephanie. Stephanie's the, the um, secretary at the place, so. I, I'm in pretty good spirits because we're maybe gonna get some money back for it, so. James spent a whole day at the insurance because it turns out the yard has insurance for theft and um, 
Now they're taking the fingerprints of the radio that the guy cut off but that we found in the sink as I told you already. And the machete is just for the coconuts. I mean, yeah, no hard feelings. I'm not gonna kill anybody just for a freaking drone. Today is over on the dirtiest Zingaro I've ever seen. Because there's like this black sand kind of thing going on here. It's just inevit inevitable. Inevitable. Um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. So they took they took James's fingerprints as well, and yeah, the the mosquitoes are are coming out. So James is searching for the anti-mosquito candles. I hope you find some soon. It's really really bad here. We're gonna make uh, tacos with the fish he caught a few days ago. A mackerel that was. He said it was like like this crazy big. But who knows. So we're gonna see you tomorrow for a long day of work. Good night, Singaro out. Bye. Peace out.